Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. This is a 2v2 on Punch Bowl that was in-house, so all on the Discord. And I really have to say thank you guys for all the games in the Discord recently. It's been a lot of fun getting to play with people, talk with people, learn from different uh, different strategies and different approaches to the game. And I'm playing today on the same team as Hind, who is always a pleasure to play with and who was a little bit sort of trolling here with the Siphon Baku, now Recon Helos. Almost always a bad choice because they're easily spotted, easily killed. And he was just kind of goofing around a little bit. Now, he's playing Israel, and is going to be going up toward Bravo. Let's just... Uh, the opener on this was was really, really important, so let's just take a look. I'm playing as USA Moto, because apparently I like to uh, occasionally play odd decks. And the M8 AGSs are the main punch. Of course, they are relatively slow compared to most Moto decks, since they are mechanized. 110 km per hour road speed, 70 km per hour off-road speed, and let's just see what happens as Honda Hun, one of my opponents, is going to be going up toward Charlie. Mi-24V, very, very scary anti-helicopter helicopters, my longbow is moving away. Blockhawk was carrying, actually I think this is a Stinger team, that was intended to set down right on the edge there, and I was hoping to avoid detection of the Mi-24V long enough to get the Stinger online, maybe even focus him with two daps. Now, the Mi-24V is comparatively expensive, 100 points, the daps are of course 65, and I think very, very good for the point cost, just one of the best helicopters in the game, and we trade. So a 35 point win for me right there, and we're able to follow up on the Mi-8 MTV, maybe even before he sets down, let's see, and one hit, second shot, second hit, and that's going to kill the infantry in there as well. Now, in the meantime, Bravo has been relatively well held here, Rangers, of course, and light riflemen, I think, in the Humvees, as well, along with the MA AGS, is trying to wrap around and just deny this entire section of reinforcement to the Red 4 team. And that was my intention, really. Prevent them from going anywhere near here, which then opens up this whole section for me to attack into. So, a light hold on the far part of Delta. But, uh, Hind is doing some good work, so we have Merkava 2As, of course, the, well, generally considered to be overpowered 90-point uh, Israeli transport tanks. And he's spread out pretty wide, so W2 is over there fighting him and Honda Hun here in Bravo, so he's definitely taking the brunt of the engagements right now. But he's doing that in order to allow me to get up and into Charlie, so we can see more Humvees with more infantry headed up that way, Light Rifleman getting some shots online. Unfortunately, not the best accuracy here, Gorno are probably a little bit better from the Soviets, but you know, we're doing what we can. And my M8s, this is, so if my Rangers were farther forward, if we had better spotting, this would be a better engagement. There's ATGMs right here. I should have already pulled back, but I haven't because I was hoping that they would target the Humvees. I'd be able to get a shot. And of course, these guys, I mean, yeah, 17 AP power, 13 rounds a minute. But I do lose one, and we're retreating, hopefully out of range of those ATGMs. Um, in the meantime, I mean, my hope was secure two bridgeheads. So rifleman on this side, rifleman on this side, and just follow up, right? So put for put units farther forward, secure this with a longbow, my other my DAP is back here, I has used two of the stingers, and I just didn't want them targeted by anti-air forward into Charlie. And this isn't as aggressive of a two-point push as what we saw recently in the, the sort of morning clips that I did with South Africa. But South Africa I think is a bit better streamlined to be a moto deck than uh, than USA. I mean I think that's not exactly a controversial statement. Also nice use of long range anti-air going in after the Kurnos not able to get a kill, but certainly making a statement there from W2. We do have to keep that in mind going forward. So I'm trying to lighten the load on Bravo while simultaneously pulling out a couple of reinforcements toward Charlie, some mortars as well, to give us some smoke against those ATGMs and potentially anything else that might need it. And this is my criticism for myself here, because if I had gone a bit more aggressively into, the, into Charlie, I think we could have already been pushing in and really just made the most of that, because the two-point zone is the most valuable instead. We're actually losing to a plus one tick right now. Rifleman 90 should be okay here, and we will grind out these Monostrelki. But, I mean, it's a matter of priorities, right? Hind was holding. The 3D Baz is holding, Shite at 13 holding at full strength. There was really minimal risk of the Red 14 pushing through on this side, or on this side, as I do have Stinger teams, Light Rifleman 90, Rangers, all of this supporting stuff, and the M8s. Like, this was a solid position. There was no need to put any more into it, and I did. Which is, I mean, it's one of the mistakes... So, when you're trying to get better at this game, like I think most people who play it are, um, one of the things you have to worry about is calling in the right reinforcements, and the other thing is calling them to the right position, and uh, those two often go hand in hand, because if you're looking at the wrong position, you're calling the wrong things. If you're calling in the wrong things, oftentimes they'll be best off in the position that you don't need them in. So, like, 
it very much is a hand-in-hand -hand sort of deal. There was no need to have Delta Force in here. There's no infantry for them to clear out, right? Rifleman and Rifleman 90 would have done just fine. Light Rifleman would have been even better because I would have that standoff range from their Super Dragons, even if they're not the most accurate things, they are the closest that USA gets to an ATGM. So, in the meantime, Rifleman spreading out into Charlie, Humvees just going looking, and these Humvees will return to them later on because they were honestly pretty goofy this whole game, so they're actually they're getting targeted a little bit, but they make it through into the woods, and it's not the last that we'll see of those guys, I promise you that. Also, my longbow play was a little bit conservative but I didn't want to go into a fortified position. I just wanted this guy to be here until I needed him. If I needed him, at least, I mean, it's a, it was a pretty much dead buy in this opener because there weren't any heavy tanks that I could go after, but we are still getting recon from him and we were able to spot some things in the opener from the Red 4 team and allowed um, the daps to go in and make some good use of themselves. So T-72 M1Ms from W2 form, and he does love those mid-range tanks. Here's some pretty good success as well, as those 90-point tanks are able to sort of kill some Gavadi, and I think they could probably, let's see, 18 frontal, 15 AP, <laughs> 18 AP, 15 frontal. I'm not really sure who would win that in a woods fight. It might be like one of those whoever shoots first type deals. And that's a nice pullback. So he's letting his reinforcements get up and in, engaging the Merkava 2As before the T-72M1Ms, which then will have preferential engagements against those heavy tanks. So that is a worry. Definitely is a worry. I have a Cobra back here, a Lab 25 Scout, and along with Heinz Paten, and we're just trying to say, okay, we have Bravo. We're pushing into Charlie. If we lose Fox, honestly, not the worst. Let's try not to. And, I mean, the Paten and the Mogwan are definitely good at that. The Mogwan actually scooping a kill there on a 90-point tank. But if we do, it's really not the end of the world, and it would be better to maintain this hold here and just cut off this side of the map. So it's it's uh, it was a conscious decision. Was it the best decision possible? I don't know. And you can see another thing about funneling everything into Bravo is now I've lost one of my bridgeheads into Charlie. I have to remake that if I even can, and that's going to be a painful thing to do. Uh, this, by the way, was not random mortars. I was hoping to and actually did kill an ATGM team. I think, yeah, the bodies were just fading out there, but uh, we saw them retreating through the open ground and we were able to get a kill. Uh, in the meantime, Humvees with their humble M2 Brownings are chewing through an Mi-8T. I mean, yeah, fair enough. 10 point transports apiece, 20 points total there, usually not the most worthwhile things after they get to where they're going, but we actually got the kill. Look at those little guys go. Just, you know, being the best Humvees they can be. <laughs> Oh, it's so goofy. <clears throat> anyway, cargos are here finally to resupply the light riflemen along with the stinger teams and just make sure everything here is healed up and happy. Way too much stuff in here and I actually need to probably push the light riflemen forward to this block and get the navy seals forward to this block. It's just, yeah, I mean, look at that. 35 points each. It was, it was a statement of I don't want to lose this part of this zone, but it was the wrong read on the situation. So, Daps moving up, Rifleman moving up, we have also some more Rifleman 90 here going into the bridgehead that I had maintained. Rangers spotting Longbow on this side, a bit danger close for the Longbow because if he got an AA around here earlier, which I would have done frankly, and so I should have expected my opponent to do it as well, um, that would be an easy way for me to get shot. As it is, spotting the VDV, not too bad. Of course the M60 is not really a big damage dealer and so they're not taking too much damage, but it, I mean every little point helps here, they're 25 point infantry, so the Rifleman getting good value. And the Humvees are just going right to Alpha. <laughs> Honestly, I should name this whole video just um, Trial of the, of the Humvees or something like that. We'll see what it actually gets called, but uh, I don't know. This was... I always like to do something goofy, and I feel like there's there's some bone in my body that needs to be sneaky about this game. It's like, I, I always try to send sneaky stuff around somewhere, so it doesn't always work out, and it's not always the most well thought through, but, uh, well, anyway, Longbow's moving forward, Dat moving forward. I'm trying to snipe those BTR-70s. They're not that valuable, but the BTRT is also a problem, and we do see that coming up here because the Longbow's pushed forward. Now, this guy, probably carrying Sapery, could run right through my Rifleman and the Humvees without a second glance, and that's a big problem. So, first volley going in, one hit, two hits, there's the kill, and there's an interesting situation there. So the Sapery hop out with two strength left. If the first shot had just barely killed, they would have been fine. But because the BTRT was still kind of alive, and then those missiles went in, they did um, basically penetration damage, I guess you could call it, into the Sapery team, and that deposited the Sapery on the open ground with just two strength left. So really unfortunate there, about a 35, I think, point loss 
for Honda Hun on that side. And let's uh, speed things up just a bit for just a second. You can see Foxtrot has been taken by uh, W2 form. And this is a problem because from the section of town, usually you see a push into the section of woods. Paten actually getting some, uh, sniped a little bit by a 23 ML is definitely valuable. A little bit unlucky that he couldn't get the kill there. Um, you definitely can sometimes. It's just it's a little bit of RNG on those uh, anti-helicopter hits, particularly things like the Paten that have, I think that's eight strength. I uh, could be wrong about that though. So M8 AGS and these guys, 50 point vehicles, not the most common pick, but they have exceptional optics and that's not something you should underestimate. It does, however, mean that losing them is very, very painful. So it's a bit of a balancing act there. 23 ML going in after Kernos 2000. That is that is a brave plane right there. But uh, that's, yeah, I mean, down to one point of, ooh, he got the kill. Look at that, boys. MiG-23 ML, 120 point plane kill. Fair enough. So Lab C2, and we need to get a cap on Charlie. We also need to get a cap on Bravo. And you can see another little bit of a troll here from Hind as he's getting a Siphon Piku that will easily be spotted by the Red 14. But my own Lab C2 is hoping to go up somewhere in here and sort of behind my own lines. And if we can decap that, if we can cap Bravo, that's a three point swing. We're gonna be going up to a plus two. And with 30 minutes left in the game, that's more than enough time to catch up to the 140 point or so lead held right now by the Red 14. And I think right now it's fair to say it's a lead that's mostly in the conquest points, not in the kills, because I mean, most of my forces are intact. I've lost comparatively little here. And uh, with the Light Rifleman shooting in, with the Delta Force moving up, we might even be able to shoot this gap as well and really take all of Bravo as um, I'm hoping to take over part of this defense and allow Hind to really focus in just on Fox Echo and move through there. So the Humvees still cranking along. Still actually, I mean, look at that. Their fuel tank is really kind of rinky-dink, but huge autonomy. So it gets them really, really far. Uh, mortars going in after the OSA. This is something you have to be careful about. So whenever you're spotted, you should move. Whenever you see something that's solid bar, that's your indication you're spotted. Now the Lab C2 has capped Charlie. And with the Navy SEALs pushing forward, Singer, uh, Stinger C team moving forward, and a couple of other supporting elements, I'm hoping to get even more of the zone to myself as we have flipped over to a plus one. Should be, oh yeah, look at that. Immediate kill. This thing lasted all about five seconds uh, in the zone. And it's just, it was spotted coming in. You can see the tag on it. Now, this was really goofy. So uh, we were all in voice chat at the time, I think. Maybe we were two separate channels, but um, I think it was one. And W2 form was going, ah, oh, they have recon in our base. I'm sitting there going, yep, this is this is the best base infiltrator I've ever used. <laughs> uh, definitely not. We actually, I think we got an ammo explosion on the Vasilek, which was kind of just odd. Uh, not able to kill it, but certainly enough to panic them and to spot a couple of things moving in in the Alpha reinforcement line. So on this side, Rifle moving up, Navy SEALs moving up. BTR-70s are a bit of a challenge for them, though, because the Hawk frag launchers are really not the best. And you can see I've turned off the tertiary on the stoner. The reason here, if I had that on, we'd be engaging the BTR-70 right now ineffectually. So the Navy SEALs will be taking damage. They wouldn't really be dishing out that much. And don't underestimate the KPVT. It's, you know, it is kinetic. So it does higher damage, I mean, of course, only versus armor, uh, with closer in distances, but it's also just a high rate of fire, really good gun. So the Rifleman 90 and the SEALs leading the way on that side, my Longbow back behind, still eight Hellfires left on them, and I'm getting some resupply forward as well just to heal up some of the relatively expensive stuff there. Rifleman, M8 AGS, Lab 25, trying to push forward and just broaden the bridgehead here as uh, Hind has retaken most of Fox. I think the town is still capped by Red 4. But, um, I mean, you can see the T-72M is just moving back on the flanks as he gets a Para up, the Merkava 2A is up, and the Para could be very, very deadly here if he gets it maybe about there or so. But you have to be careful with those things. If they get inside of engagement range, they'll be a really nice, expensive kill that uh, your opponent will love and you will hate. So, in the meantime, C2 does need to get involved in this fight because the Mi-8 MTV does have some really nice rocket pods. You can see I'm immediately moving him, trying to get him to the edge of the woods there, but it's not going to be in time to save my rifleman. My M8 AGS is spotted, so I should take my own advice and move him back, but at the time I didn't quite notice, and there he drops out of spot. So they know where he is, but they're not actively spotting him now, which can be sort of a difficult thing. So Delta Force moving back, Hind was trying to get his spike team here, and we're smoking off on that side. He's pushing up because, uh, I mean, if we can hold up there, no reason not to. It really gets you closer to uh, this section of woods. That puts a ton of pressure on the right side, from our perspective at least, of Echo which can be a nice way to wrap around that section of the map and really just use the open space in the middle as best as possible. So M8 shooting in and 
Unfortunately, losing line of sight there. More Navy SEALs. I need to get them better away from their uh, their vehicles. So you can see that split right now. Just in case the vehicle goes up, you don't want to lose the Navy SEALs to panic. And this is beginning to get a little bit worrisome. Most of my meat on this side has been taken out. The Lab C2, I think, either spotted or that's just sort of where they were guessing it was. But we are taking a little bit of fire there. And we haven't had a plus one for nearly long enough. So 58 points to 142. Nice work off of the mortars. But uh, Sapri are definitely a worthwhile engagement versus Riflemen, at least they would be if the Mortars hadn't been able to come in and intercede here. In fact, they still might get the kill just because Sapri are so good in close quarters. Yeah, I mean, it was a vehicle, but definitely not what, really, what I had wanted. My Navy Seals have been retreated back, that's why they weren't there to engage as well, because Navy Seals can take on Sapri. Of course, the Frag Rounds and the Napalm uh, carry backpacks, I guess, off the base Sapri, are a relatively similar role. So, uh, we're engaging here, M8 AGS, trying to get some shots in, Spetsnaz grew unhappy with where they are in the open field, but uh, relatively long range launchers, and I was a little worried about that, of course my M8's for some reason not presenting his front either, not really sure why. Usually when you have a threat, they auto present their front armor to a threat, so you have a little bit of a micro management aid there um, from the game mechanics. So. Givati, Delta Force moving forward, Merkava 2A, Shulk called Dalit. I like these guys, I know they're not amazing for 40 points, but uh, I don't know, it seems relatively cost effective. I only wish they had a higher rate of fire, maybe more like the Leopard 1A4, but yeah, take what you can. So I'm getting some command infantry up to Bravo, I want uh, to turn this into an even better engagement. We have, now it looks like a plus 3 as Foxtrot is capped. And Echo was moving just for a second, so this is just a plus two now, but look, one, two planes traded two to one right there, and the Para is doing exactly what I was hoping he would. So the T-32M1M getting shot, first missile, second missile, and unfortunately, 25k following up, but uh, not able to get the kill. So that's a good thing. Patriot, of course, is going to be firing in, and that's going to be a surrender from W2 form, but Honda Hun is hanging around. He, uh, at the time was a captain. I think he has been floating between second lieutenant and captain for a while now, and I, I gotta tell you, very good player. Always a pleasure to play with and against, um, and I, I'm hoping he gets back to captain soon, because it has to be a good feeling to uh, to be able to get there. So, we are knocked down to a plus one as my command vehicle in Charlie was killed. We should be able to replace that relatively soon. We also have some assault engineers. I was, you know, I was feeling fighting fire with fire, and of course, being a moto deck, I had way too many infantry activation points. So I figured, you know, Blackhawks, Assault Engineers, get some helicopters with good miniguns, and I really didn't know what else to take them in. So it's a bit of a joke, but it's uh, it could be worse. Navy SEALs, meanwhile, moving up. Rifleman 90 moving up, and I'm trying to get a spot on the enemy command vehicle. Usually it's somewhere in this area. Some people, if they're feeling a little tricky, will go farther back here. But this exposes you to risk because you can often get infiltrated around the right-hand side and they'll attack in through the back part of the Charlie zone, which is um, creative and also kind of deadly. Blackhawks moving forward and we are taking fire, but these guys, it's a little bit of a rude tactic. I'm just trying to see what I can see. And if I lose the Blackhawks, I really am not that bothered. Um, yeah, not much of anything, honestly. Oh, sad Blackhawk. But uh, in the meantime, it looks like Hind is engaging here. I mean, yeah, frankly, it was an early surrender. W2 form had some very nice pressure in. If he had been able to just expand it even a little bit, and I think really the way to have done that would have been to smoke off here and push into the woods on this side, and then use the pressure on this side to clear out the woods there from an attack through Echo and from the other side of Fox. I've done it before, it tends to work out pretty well. Um, well, for what that's worth. My Navy Seals are pretty badly damaged. Of course, they were spotted and shooting in, but I mean, it was for a good cause. We're fending off Motostrelki here again. More mortar support. Never underestimate mortar support. It's just it wins infantry fights even against better infantry that you would expect it to do well on their own. A couple of Sheridans, just a nice cheap pick as the Patriots being resupplied. And I don't know, if we take a look back, I would not like to be in Honda Hun's shoes at the moment because Bravo is unshakable. Foxtrot has proved difficult. You could think about getting a cap here as well. Um, if you have the, the town, capping up on the high ground is a good thing. Uh, if it were me though, I think I'd get a heavy tank here and shoot in. Right, so you get a heavy tank up on the high ground, you get some cheap infantry screening this way, anything that engages gets shot, um, and then you don't need to have such a tenuous cap, right? Because it's a really exposed position to be in, especially if you don't have any armored command vehicles. So longbow shooting in, BTR-90 taken out, it's pretty good. A uh, valuable shot there, and I was what I was hoping to do is use the Navy SEALs to spot as much as possible and the longbow to follow up. So you can see the Sapri moving away, and what I do next is a little bit rude. Um, should be able to see these guys aiming. Yep, there they are. Um, <laughs> I saw these guys moving back. I realized Spetsnaz grew, pretty expensive. Sapri, I mean, 15 points. 
Altogether, this is 45 points in a bundle, and uh, if the mortars can deny him, get kills in the open ground, that should be fine. So the first shots were in at the Vasilek, but I think that should be repositioning here in just a second. Oh, maybe not. Hmm. I don't know, it gets a little harder. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, so long bushing in at the T80. Kind of disappointing by the accuracy, but... Oh, come on, where's the mortar switch? There it is. These are going after the left-hand side, not the right. So we went off the Vasilek, now we're re-aiming after the Sapri and Spetsnaz nice screw, and I think we did actually get those kills. And um, this was just vicious. The Longbow is actually denying his uh, reinforcements here a little bit. Not completely, but just enough. Yak-141, desperation pull after the Longbow gets intercepted by one, two Patriots and taken down before he can get that valuable kill. And that is going to be the beginning of the end here for Honda Hun as the Navy SEALs get just far enough forward. Look at that. Uh, that's Command Infantry right there, T-72BU taking fire from the Longbow. And now that I know where they are, the Assault Engineers are immediately retasked. So, jeez, uh, how many times can you miss, my friend? Uh, I guess it was a BU. It's pretty happy frontal armor. There we go. So the Assault Engineers and the Riflemen going up to sweep through, and the Navy Seals and Riflemen on this side, making sure that no reinforcements can get up there without getting in range of the Longbow, which is a perennial problem for this side of the field. We are, I mean, it was a dead buy at the beginning. It's very much not so now. A live C2 moving up, and my hope was if I can decap, that'll push us, up, uh, push us up to plus 3. We are already in the lead, and if I can cap, that's plus 5, and that should uh, be a surrender. If you can get plus 5, plus 6 on your opponent, usually it's not a long game after that. Um, kind of goofy thing. Infantry and units in general will run away from fires. So when the napalm launchers, the flash launchers, started fires in the woods, they actually force moved and decapped the zone just for a second before the engineers were even able to continue that engagement. So the Sheridans... This was a bit of an aggressive move. In hindsight, I probably wouldn't have done it. But the M81 has 5 HE power, and that's what I brought these guys up for, is just to clear things out of the woods with... I mean, two frontal armor isn't much. You can see the Monostrelki getting a kill there, and that's why it was a bit of a mistake. But if I had done this properly with a little bit of infantry screen, that would have been a very, very deadly woods fighting force. So, um, I think... Yeah, we've only got about a minute left in the game. Foxtrot's just... I mean, if we take a look from Han to Han's side here, going into it, this is... I mean, he can't see all of our units, sure, but his own field position has to feel a little bit constricted. So, um, many thanks to W2 and Han to Han for the game. I always do enjoy playing with some good friends, and this is a much better engagement on this side of the Sheridan, just shooting in that high HE power gun as infantry were screening up and into the section of town. That's a better use using them to win those town fights at range, win the forest fights at range, not drive straight into the forest and get killed. <laughs> so that's going to be all we've got for you guys today, other than a little bit of the highlight units. So let's see, Longbow, lots of kills, T80, BTRs, lots of BTRs, and a T72BU, definitely worthwhile. MAAGS, the one that survived, did pretty well. And the Light Riflemen screening out as much as they did, definitely gave better board control then I was afraid I'd end up with Patriot, 3 kills, 25k, 23ml, Yak-141, that's what you like to see. And that's going to be it, so we'll see you guys again real soon.